What's up everyone? I'm back with another toy review and this one I am super excited about because today for you I have the G.I. Joe Classified Series Range Viper which just arrived at my house earlier this afternoon. I have been anticipating this figure after I missed out on it uh, via Hasbro Pulse's drop so I had to resort to other means to get mine in hand. And here we are. So let's have a look at it. So you've got the amazing uh, Oliver Barrett art, I believe, on the front here. And then you've got the fantastic uh, Joe artwork on the left with the dark Energon cubes that we have already heard about time and time again. So I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, it is the standard windowless packaging for now, which is alluded to. And there's a trigger warning for some people. Plastic free packaging on the box. Yes, a lot of people cried about that. I wasn't one of them, but that's another story. So if we pivot to our side here, something interesting to note here is the uh, the character specialties that are normally pictured here on the spine of the box are really, really small. And I'll just bring that up here and show you. You can barely see them. And with my port eyesight, I had to use the magnifying zoom of my camera lens to decipher what they are. And I'll give you the rundown of that now. So the first one, and we're going to go from left to right here. The first one uh, is environmental specialist, and he is a level four in that, which is a top grade. The second one is launcher, and he's a level two. Uh, if you remember from my last unboxing of Bazooka, I believe he was a level four which makes sense. And moving on to the next one, uh, that is Stealth, and he is a level four in Stealth. And finally, the last one is Recon, and again, he is level four. So all in all, he's a pretty powerful uh, troop builder and uh, specialist for the Cobra Legions. Uh, I won't bother about the QR code because that leads to nowhere if you scan it. And we'll go to the back of the box, You've got a breakdown of the figure and the loadout and the head sculpt and the shoulder tampos here. A whole other, lot of uh, other mumbo jumbo down here that's not worth noting. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, there's nothing really there to note other than the G.I. Joe brand logo and the bottom of the box, which I already showed you. So without further ado, let's crack him open. So I did show you in my last video that the easiest way to do this without damaging the box is just cut from the bottom, fold it out, flip these down, and then straight out, both items come. And we don't want it to fall over, but here we are. So let's pick him up and see how he has been delivered. All right, so he is standing upright and he is in place. He's Got a little bit of a uh, looking down uh, perspective from his head, but we can just go boink and fix that. So you've got the standard uh, locker, and he's number 76, which I don't think I noted when I first showed you the box. So he's number 76 in the line. It's Cobra Locker, Range Viper on it. You've seen this all before if you've, if you've been into classifieds for a while. But if you haven't, uh, this is where all your accessories lie. So let's uh, have a look inside here first before we get to the figure. Just open this up. And like I do with these things, just toss them aside for now. You've got your standard Joe Cobra baggy. You can open this any way you want, really. I just get the knife and I just go like that and dump it all out. Okay, so let's pick up a little piece by piece, starting with this little handgun here. Sidearm, nothing too flash, but yeah, cool nonetheless. We've got his grenade launcher here. Now, I don't know if that chamber spins. Let's, it does spin. Oh, that's cool. Let's see if I can just give you... Oh. Trying to get without getting my fingers in front of the camera. It's a little difficult to sort of show, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, it spins. 
So yeah, it's a nice little touch. Is it straight? I can already see that it's not. It, it That is terrible. Look at the bend in that stock. Now, this is another example of uh, these weapon QC issues that the classified line has, has had of late. It's disappointing, um, you know, because I can bend it back into place, but it'll probably just naturally warp again. So maybe a little bit of heat might fix that, I don't know. But when you're paying the amount of money we pay for these figures, it would be nice if the weapons were more durable and came in a better position straight out of the box. Like there's no excuse for that. So we'll put that one to the side. Here we have his sigh, I guess you could call it a sigh. It's almost like a, a trench, trench knife, a, a big trench knife. But yeah, you can call it a sigh, it doesn't really matter. Cool, nonetheless, is it straight? Yes, it is. Okay, <laughs> cool. Bonus. All right. Now we've got his axe accessory here. It's a cool little one. I don't know if it's straight or not. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. So, we're doing okay since the grenade launcher was terrible. Ah, oh, man. I can already tell this one's bent. Look at that. Come on, man. Like, again, that just shouldn't happen. That's terrible. You know, I'll give it to Valiverse for their figures and the durability. Oh, sorry, not the figures, their weaponry and the durability of it. And, you know, you don't really get this happening with their stuff. But, yeah, again, Hasbro needs to do better on this front. Anyway, we'll have a look at the gun. That's it there. Cool piece nonetheless. All right, and I'm assuming that is for the ammo drum for it. We should clip into it. Let's go ahead and do that now, just to try and make something better of this. So there's a little notch under here, you might be a little hard to see, but you basically just feed, feed the bullets through like that. That piece just clicks in like that. Let me turn it around and see on the other side. But that's where the belt feeds in, which looks great. I will say that. This, however, not so great. All right, now we have a scarf or neck chief because, you know, every Cobra Trooper seems to need a neck chief at this point. I feel like we've had them with the Vipers. This guy, maybe like I think one of the Cobra Infantries or Troopers, one of them had it, maybe even both. Don't know why they can't continue to give it to us, but it's another accessory, so sure, aesthetics. Ammo belt. This is pretty self-explanatory. That's gonna hook over the shoulders and torso of the figure, which we'll get to shortly. And lastly, this backpack, which is in a cardboard insert, which we're just gonna pop off there, pop off there, toss to the side. And this is the backpack. Now this is this is really nice. Like, if you have a look, let's see if I can get some more light on it. Oh, that's probably a bit too far away. Let's maybe zoom in here a little bit. I might be able to get a better look at it that way. There we go. It's got some really nice detail on it. You, I like the gas canister up here which plugs into, I believe, the back of his neck. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And you've got that nice little uh, readout display on the back fat backpack. I guess you could say maybe it's like a range finder or, or something like that. Feed some intel through to his helmet. You get the bullets, more bullets. Because when you're on the range, you need more ammo, aren't you? And on the side profile, a pouch, which is obviously just deco. You can't do anything with it. On the other side, another pouch. On the back, very basic. We've got the back peg, nothing really more. So let's kit him out. Now, getting him out of here is pretty easy. You can rip it open if you want. Uh, personally, 
I just tend to take my knife and I'll cut these. My knife might need a bit of a sharpening, I think. Also, I'm trying to do this in a way that is probably a little bit unorthodox in terms of not wanting to send the tripod and camera flying. And then you can just go pop, 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 and there you have it. And again, we've got a nice look at the Olive Barrett art. These art inserts are great. It's going to be interesting to see what they do moving forward with the, uh, the window packaging that's coming back in 24. I'll pop that to the side Once again. And here is the figure before his kit out. Look at that head sculpt, that's great. All this uh, secondaries on here, really nicely detailed. More pouches, more ammo. Got a bandolier of, uh, of grenades for the grenade launcher. Got a holster here. That's obviously for the sidearm. And from the back, we've got like the back peg. There's a little hole for the other part of the backpack hose to go into. So yeah, let's give him a, a bit of a T-pose test. Um, he's a little bit tight in that area. Let's let's find out how this goes. All right, that's okay. Oh, this one's a bit stiff. You know, remember what you can use heat on these if you're a little bit unsure. If you want to loosen them up, it's a bit of boiling water or a hairdryer. Just don't put the hairdryer too close. So standard T pose back in the frame might help and let's see if he can kick his own ass uh, that legs a bit stiff but oh mama that this is almost like the bazooka one again, again all over just oh man that is stiff yeah look that's going to take a little bit of work let's have a look Man, I don't even want to force that. I'm not going to force that. Uh, last thing I want is a broken figure on camera and seeing as how I just got it. Uh, also for that reason. The kit out. Let's start with the backpack. Just push to see how easily this goes in. That backpack peg is actually a little bent. I don't know if you can see that. It's very minor, but I'm just going to go gentle here. Go gentle into the night, Adam. Into the night with the Range Viper. Man, that does not want to go in properly. I don't know if it's the straps that are holding it back a bit, but if you can see there, it's jutting out a fraction. See that? Ah, dear. Another, another little wrinkle. So now let's do this hose and see how easy that goes in. Not expecting miracles here, but... All right, so that just sits in there like that. You don't feel it click in or anything like that. It just sort of sits. But man, that backpack peg is not good. Look at that from that top down view. That should not jut out that far. That's, that is not great. Okay. So let's kid him out with all the weapons. So we'll chuck this sidearm in there. It goes in very easily, nothing special. Now I don't see anywhere on Ah, yes, I lie. So he does have a spot here on the belt. If you can see that there, it's probably a bit dark. Maybe if I can zoom in here, it's a bit more light on the matter. You can see that there, there is a hole or a loop to put an accessory in. What that accessory is, I don't know. I'm gonna try the knife first, it could be that. Might work for a couple of things. So the knife does go in there, so that's an option but it is a little bit tricky to get out. It's not really straight. I'm just seeing if there's anywhere else. There's nowhere else. He's got no sheaves on his arms or on his legs for putting that. So I'll just put that to the side, but I, I'm guessing that's the only spot. Now his neck chief, neck chief just clips around. So you just pop that on like so. And he's ready for the wiki wiki wild west. All right. 
let's put this. It is pretty pliable, so don't worry about stretching it too much by doing it like that. I think that may sit a bit better. What do you think? I think it looks better. It seems like it's right. All right, so back to the backpack once again. Man, I'm just going to try it. No, that is not going in further. All right, making my piece with that, and we're moving right along. Let's take this bad boy here. <sighs> Weapons click in into the hand. Very easy. You saw how quickly I did that. No forcing of the finger, the trigger finger, I should say. So that's good. No stock on this is a bit eh, but that's nothing major. He can hold this handle here as well. And it looks pretty tough except for the bent barrel. You gotta love the, the deco of this figure, the, the color scheme. I'm a big, big fan of that. I had the original one as a kid. Uh, he's long gone. I don't think I have the, um, the modern era version that came out. I think I'm still chasing that one. If anyone has one, let me know. There we go, that's the grenade launcher. Which is, I guess, a quintessential weapon of this figure, especially considering one of his specialties is launcher. Now, the knife. The knife is the only accessory to go in there because if you look at the axe, the handle is way too big. So that's not going to go anywhere. Now, again, as I said, there is no place for these other accessories to be held. Unless I'm missing something. Um, someone might have a hack that they've come up with, but I cannot see anywhere. You've got the nice Cobra insignia on his left shoulder. The other shoulder is bare, yeah, there's nothing there. And look at that, that backpack just fell out. That is very average, Hasbro. Very average. I'm trying to push that in and it won't go further. So keeping that in mind, when posing this figure on display, if yours ends up being like mine with the backpack issue, it's not gonna it's not gonna have a lot of room for it to uh, to display perfectly. That is pretty much him in all his glory. I'm gonna tuck that knife in there because that is the only thing that appears to fasten to him, which is a bit of an awkward spot, really. Because how are you gonna grab that really quickly if you're in a fight? Like it's right behind, it's not even accessible from your hip, it's like behind your hip. But I guess that's a range Viper problem and a Cobra issue. Now, in terms of standing him, which is what, obviously what I'm trying to do now, let's just see how easy that is. Yep. So that's pretty much the figure. Um, there's not a great deal more I don't think I can, can give you about it. Uh, I've got a couple more on the way. It'll be interesting to see if that uh, issue with the backpack peg persists and also the bent stock, bent barrel syndrome. Uh, that this one's copped. So on that note, I guess it's time for my shark rating. I really wanted to give this a figure five sharks. Um, an iconic look, a great weapons loadout, a fantastic addition to the line. But I think it feel like because of the QC issues, and on this occasion, I'm having to drop it down a peg. Like. For all the greatness of, you know, an accessory with an ammo fed belt, that just a drum that, sorry, that clips in like that so easily and the weapons fitting into the hands so easily. With those QC issues, it's, it, it really, really leaves a sour taste in one's mouth. Because it shouldn't happen. It, it just shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be a thing, you know. And I know I'm not alone here in experiencing this. 
So the message needs to get out there, you know, because in my situation living in Australia, there's no way easily I could even bother attempting to return this to Hasbro. Like I'd be wasting my time. So I have to mod it. I have to try and, you know, heat it up and see if it will return to its natural level state. So here's hoping in the future, factory issues like this can be resolved before the product is in hand. So on that note, I'm going to give the figure three and a half sharks out of five. And that's all I have to say. There's nothing more to it, as simple as that. So yeah, if, if you've liked the review, fantastic. Feel free to opine on it in the comments. He really doesn't want to stand up. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I am new to YouTube, but I've got more reviews of classified figures coming as soon as I can get them in hand, as, as well as other things. I, I just don't want to focus on classified. I want to focus on 112 scale toys that work with the G.I. Joe brand. And not just like figures, I'm, I want vehicles, you know, you like that Fortnite boat, for instance, or diorama pieces like that you might find from companies that are they're not related to Hasbro. So if those sort of things are your jam, please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, hit the like button on your way out, and thank you for tuning in.